I'm going to step off the lamb now. It was a step that reverberated through history. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Humanity's finest moment. But it was a story that began 12 years earlier, at the height of the Cold War between America and the Soviet Union. Look forward to that very much, sir. Oh, that looks beautiful from here, Neil. The United States, it's uh, different, but it's very pretty out here. In 1957, the Soviets sent the first satellite into orbit, Sputnik 1. Beaming its regular signal back to Earth, it comes as a shattering blow to the Americans. The Russians have surged ahead in the space race, and with that single act, they demonstrate their technological and ideological superiority. Sputnik, for an entire generation of Americans, was the Cold War personified. Um, it was the potential for a, a communist takeover of America and really a communist takeover of the West. Uh, my father, who was among that generation, says he can still remember how terrifying it was to have the beep that was coming from Sputnik broadcast so that they could hear on radios across America. And it was, um, it was a really a seminal moment for Americans. The Soviets continue to dominate. In 1958, they launch Sputnik 2 and send the first animal into orbit. A dog called Laika. Their rockets become bigger and better. By 1961 comes Vostok 1, powerful enough to send a man into Earth's orbit. Yuri Gagarin is chosen to be the first man into space. In a few short years, the Soviets have made space their dominion. Alan Shepard becomes the first American in space a few months later. For the new US administration, coming second isn't enough. If you look back at the two superpowers and the sort of sabre rattling that was going on around the world, the thing you have to remember is that other countries did take note. And if one superpower or another had a major technological triumph for all the world to see, it really could sway the ideological viewpoint that that, that country perhaps had in response to the superpower that had, that had achieved that success. So there was a key line that the vice president under Kennedy Lyndon B. Johnson came up with when trying to sell the Apollo program to the president, and that was that if you're second in space, you're second in everything. NASA is desperate to catch up, and so continues with its space program. The nation puts its faith in ex-Marine John Glenn. Have a breaking high level light. You are go. Water systems, go. Range operations, clear to launch. Mercury capsule, go. All pre-start power lights are correct. The ready light is on. Eject mercury umbilical. Oil evacuate. Mercury umbilical clear. Mercury is evacuate. Lights on. All recorders to fast. T minus 18 seconds and counting engines start. His heart keeps a steady beat as he prepares to blast off into space. Godspeed, John Glenn. Ten, nine. He's on board Friendship 7, 
the most powerful American rocket ever built. John Glenn becomes the first American to orbit the Earth. Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. Capsule is turning around. Oh, that view is tremendous. By a hostile flag of conquest... The country's youthful new president then ups the ante. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. But despite Kennedy's call to arms, America remains second. US rockets explode on the launch pad. Soviets send up several spacecrafts to the moon. One of them, Luna 9, even transmits the first pictures from the lunar surface. The images are intercepted by Britain's Jodrell Bank telescope and published in a UK newspaper before the Soviets themselves have even seen the data. A small victory then for the West. So the Russians were also not only getting into Earth orbit with heavier and heavier spacecraft, but they were also sending out probes very early on that were heading towards the Moon and even out beyond. They, they were aiming at Venus very early on. And this was way ahead of what any of the American technology could do at the time. It took some years before the Americans could categorically say they'd, they'd clawed their way back to be an equal with the Soviets and then later overtook them in the later 60s. It wasn't until the Apollo program that the Americans edge ahead of the Soviets. Using the most powerful rocket ever built, the giant Saturn V, NASA launches a series of epic missions that thrills and for a moment unites a troubled world. These initial missions are designed to test out the procedures and equipment that would lead to the first men setting foot on the moon. Towering in its launch pad, the king of all rockets. We have ignition sequence start. Its engines are powerful enough to send three astronauts into space. unprecedented speeds. Onlookers marvel at the Saturn V's beauty as well as its might. Apollo 8 is the first manned spacecraft to escape Earth's gravity. Roger. Confirm second flight set, Roger. 
It reaches the moon in December 1968. Frank Borman, James Lovell and William Anders are the first to witness what lies on the dark side of the moon. And as they emerge after one orbit, this is what they see. On Christmas Eve, while looking at Earth from lunar orbit, the astronauts read from the book of Genesis. In that moment, the people of the world see what they see. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. So back in, in December of 1968, when the first humans orbited the Earth in Apollo 8 and took the first colour photographs of the Earth, this beautiful blue and white rippled marble of a planet rising above the barren, rather, rather bland grey surface of the Moon, it had a profound effect on the populations that, that saw it in, appearing in magazines and newspapers around the world. And what it did was to kick off a number of big environmental movements. It was suddenly felt that the Earth was a fragile, vulnerable place and that it needed friends, and Friends of the Earth was formed. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. This is Apollo Science Control. We're still aiming toward our planned liftoff at the start of the lunar window, 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight. On July 16, 1969, the crew of Apollo 11 began a journey that would change our view of the world even more. This is Apollo Launch Control, T minus three hours, four minutes, 32 seconds and counting. Right on time as far as the astronaut countdown is concerned, the prime crew now departing from their crew quarters here at the Kennedy Space Center. The transfer van now departing on the start of its eight mile trip to launch pad A here at complex 39. Right now our count at three hours, three minutes and counting. Off of 32 minutes past the hour. Spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin now has completed the status check of his personnel in the control room. All report they are go for the mission. Neil Armstrong just reported back it's been a real smooth countdown. We passed the 52nd mark. seemed possible. It was as if the very stars were within our grasp. Twelve minutes later, and Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and Mike Collins were in orbit and headed toward the moon. A few days later, Apollo 11 reaches